Well, Rob, Happy New Year. It's nice to catch up with you again. Good, good to see you, Rodney. I, I understand that uh, you're on lockdown again, given what's going on in the UK. Yep, we, we are. Um, so things are a little bit bad here on the pandemic, but um, hopefully, hopefully we're going to bounce back quick enough. Well, best of luck with that. So, gosh, you know, we're just a week or so after formal Brexit. What are you and clients talking about today about that? I think the first thing is, if, I mean, I feel, I feel like it's a wait, as in something's happened. Um, everyone wanted a trade agreement. Um, it was touch and go. The game of poker went up to the late last minute. So there is a, is a trade agreement. It's very skinny, but focused on goods. So um, no tariffs, no quotas on goods. Very light in relation to services as expected. And, and some big items for businesses. Um, data flow and financial service um, being sort of pushed out into um, for further consideration down down the line so with that it, it's not over though the conversations around businesses at the moment are around still dealing with the impact on supply chain so obviously there's greater customs paperwork and processes there is disruption um, at at, at the borders and people grappling with 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 the new world so it's a weight's being lifted as in at least there is a trade agreement um but it's it's more work needs to be done as in ensuring that the business is robust and the supply chain remains robust so quite a lot of thinking about just organizationally is the business best positioned for post-brexit life Exactly. And, and most businesses would have been, let's say, um, fully prepared or as fully prepared as, as possible. Um, but, you know, when the, when those plans get tested in, in practice, um, issues and practical items arise. And, and obviously, for some businesses, they're still playing catch up. Makes sense. So it's very much a let's see how this is bedding down and figure out what we need to do. To Interesting. So... I'm not going to try and put you on the spot, but if you had a, a crystal ball, if you were thinking forward, what do you what do you think we're going to be talking about in this space in, I don't know, six months, nine months, something like that? Where's this going? So I think the interesting thing, what is the relationship with the, the UK and the EU going to be like? having gone through this hard negotiation process. Um, I think it's clear to see the UK certainly wants to be separate from the EU, unless if, if we focus, particularly focus on, 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 on tax, it wants to be aligned to international rules. Um, the, the trade agreement, as I say, is super positive, um, but it does get reviewed in five years and the EU and the UK can take action against each other if there's sort of violations. So, there's clauses and provisions around um, setting a, a, a fair playing field, et cetera. So my expectation is um, we'd like to keep the relationship strong with Europe. Um, we won't be following, um, say, new EU directives, I think it's fair, fair to say. Um, it'd be interesting how Europe um, develops with us not being mm -hmm. in the EU, um, particularly on, on new measures. Um, and passing of, of, of tax measures in, in, in the EU. Um, so it, it may be that the UK plays around the edges, a bit more freedom around some incentives, um, but it, it may be that the EU um, consolidates more. And so, so the difference will be the, the UK's out, outside of it. So I think it's an interesting dynamic in, in tax. Um, and then on the, on the, the bigger platform on, on trade, I, my, my hope is um, that the trade agreement um, is, how, is held up and further issues are, are, are resolved. And so it'd be a strong basis for trade going forward. Well, you know, it's interesting, right, Rob? I, I was just thinking back to the last discussion we had where you pointed out, for example, that there may be areas of divergence and you cited, you know, what's going on with DAC6 and, and the proposals around that. What, 
just refresh me on what that is again. What's what's happening? Yes, yeah, so that was one totally unexpected sort of um, part element of the free tr- free trade agreement. So the the, the UK is sort of backtrack. So we are not adopting EU MDR, other than getting a little bit technical. One of the hallmarks, hallmark D, and the more burdensome hallmarks, it's 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 dropping. And, and the rationale is it's going to follow transparency rules um, driven by OECD um, rather than be, by the EU. So already we see an example of uh, a divergence from EU rules, um, but with the, the, the sort of safety networks, we're always going to follow good international practice. So it's just fascinating, Rob. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds over the next, like I said, six to nine months. So... Hey, really good catching up with you again. Please stay safe and healthy, and I look forward to talking to you in the very near future, in person. (laughs) I look forward to that too. Thanks, Rodney. Take care.